Hello, everyone, and, uh... Oh, my. Oh, I survived on official St. Patrick's Day. Oh, man, it looks pretty nasty out there, though. Gray, lifeless, people wandering alone up and down the street. Oh, wait, it always looks that way. So, yes, indeed, official came and official left, and it was pretty much just a normal Friday for me. And I didn't even go to bed that late. Just a normal, average old Friday. Except for the part where I partied with all the town's drunken hobos. Oh, and when I spray-painted a big butt on the hood of a police car. Oh yeah, and we tried to see if our friend Billy could fly because he said he could, so we tossed him off of the roof of Illini Tower. We haven't heard from him since, but I think he's probably flown off to join his flying brethren, because it's better up there. Oh, and we lit a local supermarket on fire and tried to put it out with our pee. Oh yeah, and we went to the Apple Store in town, and we shot Roman candles at all their computers. Oh yeah, and we drove a car into Taco Bell and wouldn't leave until they gave us chalupas. I kept on yelling out the window, Yo quiero Taco Bell, but they just called the cops and acted like they didn't know what I was talking about. But yeah, overall, a pretty uneventful day. Good afternoon, butt kickers. It's March 5, the 64th day of 2011, which means in addition to people having partied a lot last night, 29 years ago today, John Belushi partied way too hard. Like, way too hard. He, uh, died is what I'm saying. His cause of death was what is known as a speedball, a combined injection of both heroin and cocaine. Mmm, my blood vessels feel all tingly. The woman who gave him the speedball was convicted of manslaughter and spent 15 months in jail. Apparently she was a shady character, and if I were JB in that situation, and even semi-lucid, which I'm not even sure if he was, I would have given up an arm before letting her inject me with something. And then a few years later, Chris Farley, who was also from Saturday Night Live, who also got popular in films because of his SNL history, also did a speedball, and also died at the age of 33. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, after all. Too soon? I guess that just goes to show you that history repeats itself. At least both of them are immortalized in their films. I think I'm gonna watch the Blues Brothers today. I guess their unfortunate demises should be used as a lesson for today's partiers, especially partiers in my age group. Because people in my age group tend to believe secretly that they're immortal. You're not immortal, I promise. And so I present to you, dear viewer, Griff's one-step plan for preventing over-partying and thereby some of the nastier modes of death because you are, after all, very mortal, version 1.0. Step one of one, don't be stupid. Assess the situation, make a judgment call on the overall stupidity of the entire thing, and then decide whether or not you'd like to be a possible unfortunate victim of that stupidity. Because, little known fact, dangerous fun is not the only kind of fun. For example, I assume you watch these videos for the modicum of fun they provide, but I'm highly incredulous regarding their lethality. I mean, sure, you could conceivably croak during the video, but the cause of the fun is not the same thing as the cause of the death. Unless, of course, you die from laughter. <laughs> oh man, the wittiness of that joke alone probably put a few viewers into cardiac arrest. But long and overly preachy story short, You've got a brain, and it has decidedly more uses than being something to screw up with a freaking speedball. It's there. Use it. Until tomorrow, I'm Griffin. I'm still talking.